but he did not detail to us the celebration of his birthday. That's why we don't do it. And you will, it will be unfair for you to celebrate the Prophet Muhammad's day. What about, Allah told us we should not make distinction between the Prophets. Uh, what about the birthday of uh, Isa, Musa, Suleiman, Dawood, uh, Ishaq, Yaqub, Ismail, Ibrahim, Nuh? No celebration for the. Ma, you hate those prophets. You're not celebrating their birthday, you hate them. If you tell me we know his birthday, but we don't know their birthday, I say no. There's a disagreement between the scholars about, about the specific day the prophet was born. Many people of Ahlul Hadith believe it to be on the, at the 8th, not the 12th. Some the 9th, and some others the 10th and some others the 11th, and many believe it to be the 12th. But if it was the 12th, that would be a tragedy. When did the Prophet die? 12th. Of what? Rabi al awwal It's the same day. So you have to divide the day into two events. Mourning and celebrating. It's a miracle. If Allah took His Prophet on the same day, of his birthday, that means Allah doesn't want you to celebrate. Tell me about it. Why he made it at the 12? Another question. Uh, okay. Sheikh, uh, uh, yeah. just wanted to say, you, know, you, you spoke about Wahda uh, Tullah I mean, when you hear some of the talks, you, see, you hear that some of the solid scholars of the past even they were of the opinion of this Muhammad that we do. They used to even, like, for like, example, like Imam uh, al Nawawi, apparently. I don't know how true it is. Can you elaborate on that, please? No, I don't elaborate because I've never come across this. I've heard it from a few people. Yeah, you heard it. My way is to. Uh, I, I have my library ready with me. You can refer me to any statement that he said or any anything from his book. I'll bring it immediately. I don't believe if, if, uh, any of them know we said it, but uh, I leave my email with the brother. He has it already. If you could find where he said it, I can. Remember. But I said to you, and uh, by the way, now he is not of the self. Now he is not of the self. So next time, don't say that some of the self like and now he said something like no. But if he said it, it's false. That's false. If, if let's say he said. But to us, to me, he still, he still didn't say it because I did not come across that. And until I'll be sure, to me, until now, he did not say it. Until he proved it. I've read in the uh, book of uh, Ibn Dhammi, uh, the friends of Shahdeen, uh, he mentions uh, about the Abdals over there. Is this authentic? Uh, no. What are they? Who are they? Uh, Al-Abdal. Yeah. I remember he talked about Al-Abdal in Taymiyyah, but he, uh, he mentioned that, uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, about Abdal, uh, I'll bring it. I'll bring you about who are Al-Abdal. Just bear with me a second. Give me another question while I'm looking. Yeah, I'll just... Um, one of the, we, we invited one of the brothers to come, mm. and he's from the um, mm. people, mm. they were there, mm -hmm. and um, he was saying, he was like trying to say that, you know, you people, you do these kind of lectures to disunite the Ummah, and it's like a fitna we are doing. The one who commit bid'ah and invite for bid'ah, he's, he's the one who's dividing the Ummah. Not the one who defend the Sunnah of the Prophet. No. Because the bid'ah is the cause of division. Not the opposite. Continue your question. I'm sorry to interrupt yeah, no, it's okay. And he, he was like saying, isn't it important um, to do a um, lecture on the similarities between us and the Shaitan instead of um, the Shia and the Sufis? Now, by the way, Regarding uh, Hadith Abdal, in my nation there are 40, is that it? Is that it? Yes. Yeah. He said, it is mostly distant from fabrication, yet 
it is munqata'. Munqata' means there is a cut in the chain of narration. Inqita' in the sanad, in the chain of narration. So this, he said, this is the this is the best thing of all of the Sufi. The, all of the hadith about Aqtab, uh, Awtad, etc., etc., Abdal, all fabricated, except this hadith, and Abdal fi ummati arba'un, he said, it is, but still it's not authentic, it's monqati'a, but not fabricated as the others. Because there is, fabricated is the worst, but monqati'a is no, it's close, and he is da'if. But it's not, it's not uh, fabricated. Fabricated is the worst. And very close to become sahih, yet it's not sahih. It doesn't explain who they are and their purpose or... Yeah, he said there are 40. Uh, there, there must be 40. And each one die, Allah will, will bring an alternative. Other than There should be 40 in, in the earth. Okay. Is there anything wrong? Uh, th th did I cover the question? Yeah. yeah okay. Um, is there anything wrong in saying, Ya Allah and Ya Rasul? Well, what does it mean if you say, Ya Allah? I'll ask uh, a boy. Give me a boy. A small boy. A small boy. Where, where are the boys? Where are the boys? The one who's right here. Where is it? Yeah, come, come, come. Come. What is the meaning of Ya Allah? You answer me. Look at me. What is the meaning of Ya Allah? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Okay. The simple person will know that Ya Allah means, Oh Allah, I need your help. Help me. Okay? So, what does it mean when you put here in this corner, Ya Allah, and I saw that in some mosques, and here you put Ya Rasulallah. Let me bring it, the Quran. Where's the Quran? Can anyone give me the Quran? Okay. That's the Quran. Open Surah Al Jinn. Surah Al Jinn. Surah Al Jinn. Abin. No. Surah Al Jinn. Where is Jinn? Jinn. Jinn. How do you name Jinn? That's Al Jinn. Okay. Ayah eighteen. What do we see in their mosques? Ya Allah. They may say this only dhikr. Like, ya Rasulullah. Ya Allah means, oh Allah, for my need. Ya Rasulullah also help me for my need. What does Allah say here? وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Mosques should be for Allah. Therefore, don't call anyone with Allah that is in the mosques. So why do they put in the mosque? Ya Rasulullah. Allah said, don't call anyone with Allah in the places of worship. Don't forget that. So, uh, we should not be asking the Prophet because if the Prophet can be asked after his death, the companion <coughs> will be doing that. Don't you remember that the companions had a fight? Did the companions fight or not? Because they did not, they disagreed. Okay? If they disagreed on something and they had the access to the Prophet, to speak to the Prophet, <coughs> Would it be better for them to shed their blood or it would, it would have been better for them to go to the grave of the, of the Prophet and say, Oh Prophet, uh, I am Ali and I disagree with Muawiyah. Oh Prophet, who is right, who is wrong? Huh? That would be saving them from shedding their blood, right? Did they do that? No. Why? Why the Prophet should hear you and come to you and visit you? Well, he did not appear to his companions at all, never. Why Omar said, Oh Allah, we used to ask you by your Prophet Muhammad, and that is in Bukhari. Then he asked Al Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet, said to him, Abbas, stand up and make tawassul for us, make dua for us, ask Allah for us. Why the Prophet said about Oasis al Qarani? You know Oasis al Qarani? What is that? Assalamu, assalamu alaikum means, Oh Allah, let your salam be on them. 
And sometimes when you give declaration, it doesn't mean that you're speaking to the one who must hear you necessarily. Because Umar said to the black stone, I know that you are a stone, that you need a benefit, no give any harm. And haven't I have seen the Prophet kissing you? I would have never done that. <laughs> Was he speaking to the black stone? Does it mean that the black stone can hear him? So this is supplication from the living one to the dead one. And Abu Jafar al-Tahawi, he said, وَفِي دُعَاءِ الْأَحْيَاءِ مَنْفَعَةٌ لِلْأَمْوَاتِ And in the supplication of the living one, there is a benefit for the dead one. They made it the opposite. وَفِي دُعَاءِ الْأَمْوَاتِ مَنْفَعَةٌ لِلْأَحْيَاءِ In the supplication of the dead, there is a benefit for the living one. You know Allah punished them. If you tell them where is Allah, that if you tell them that Allah is in heaven, they'll say, what? No, He's not in heaven. Right? They don't believe that Allah is in the height over them. Right? It has been said to them, then let your supplication be to the ground. You don't raise your hand because Allah is up, then supplicate those who are down. That's what's happening. Another question. Is there any other question? Yes, brother? From a historical point of view, how did sort of Sufism or Shia beliefs or traits enter into places like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. From a historical point of view, how did that infuse into the Sunni, so-called Sunni culture in places like Bangladesh? Uh, I said to you that Sufism was known in India. There's a book written by Abu Rayhan al-Bayruni, long time ago. I think maybe uh, the year 400, 350, and he is uh, uh, architecture, architecture, and he used to be visiting places from place to place, and he used to be a great scholar in, rega in regards to uh, galaxy and animal felak and all of this stuff. Astronomy. He's not astronomist. Astronomy. Yeah. And even today, Western people they benefited from his knowledge. Of astronomy. He's not like a time a scholar, a religious scholar, no. He went to India and he wrote a book called Tahkiq Ma Lil Hindi Min Makula. He made some many articles about what he witnessed in India. And he talked about people, they used to be called the Sufis, and that is before Islam entered to India. He's talking about them before Islam went there. And he said, There are people who call themselves Sufis, the Sufis of India. They keep worshipping God, worshipping God, until they become one sausage with God. They become one. That was in India. And I think Bangladesh at that time was a part of India. Some people say that, well many people say, that you need to follow a madhab or you're upon misguidance. So, as the Prophet ﷺ said, I have left four madhabs. If you follow, if you uphold, you will never be misguided. Is that what the Prophet said? What did he say? He said, I have left with you two things, not four madhabs. As long as you follow, huh, you will never be misguided. My book and the son of Rasulullah. What about those who did not follow madhabs before Shafi'i, before Ahmad ibn Hamad, before Abu Hanifa, before Malik? They did not find madhabs. Huh? Are they misguided? Wallahi, those four madhabs, they are, they create, they cause, they form a great facility for closer, for closer reaching to the Sunnah. Yet, they became like that. This is not the mistake of, of a chef. It's not the mistake of Hanifa. It's not the mistake of Malik. It's the mistake who came after and made themselves copies. And, and this is fitna. 